We're looking at an interesting topic on the way this week, and it's called The Greatest and Deadliest Gift. Very interesting topic. It gets this whole idea that we have a free moral agent. We have free will. And it's where God actually set boundaries for himself that even he doesn't cross. So we need to look at that. He can engage and have power over everything and he does in the world, except for one thing, man's free will, his free choices. We wouldn't be in the image of God if we were not able to make our own free choices. To be able to know the difference between right and wrong, and then choose to go down either pathway. And that maintains to be true even as Christians. He doesn't make Christians do right things. He doesn't make sinners do wrong things. And he doesn't make anyone choose him and have faith in him. And I know I've heard from godly men and other believers that he gave them their faith. He did it all. There's nothing they can do. And, um, and I do believe that he will go way out of his way in an incredible way, supernatural ways, to reveal himself to us, to reveal the work of Jesus to us to reveal the person of Jesus and their love so that then we're presented with the truth and with the facts and what's real to be able to choose them, to be able to say, yes, I'm a sinner. And yes, I need you to save me because I'm not right and I'm not living right and I have been a sinner and I need you, Lord. He doesn't make anybody say that or what we would be robots and then it wouldn't make any sense why there are so many people out there that don't. God is a just God. With great responsibility, with a free moral agent and free choice, comes great accountability. Judgment, if we're not careful. God does expect us to participate in making decisions in our lives. He guides us and strengthens us when we need it, for sure. But he doesn't make choices for us. And Satan doesn't make us do things either. So giving Satan power is just, you know, a ridiculous notion. You know, the devil made me do it. Although I think I've used that on more than one occasion when I've eaten more chocolates than I should have. But um, on a serious note about this free moral agent and free gift... It is what makes us like God. It's what gives us a part of the image of God that we bear. But we know also that the angels in heaven, one third of them chose to follow Lucifer. So there's free moral agent and free choice in heaven. God doesn't do the robot thing. He doesn't do the, I'm going to make you feel and think a certain way so that then I'm going to force you to make a certain decision. That isn't the kingdom. And that doesn't even sound like the kingdom. That sounds like a form of bondage, a form of slavery. We all need to really think seriously about the choices we make as Christians. Because if we can make the free moral choice to believe and follow him and leave behind a sinful life in salvation, we can also make the free moral, moral choice to recant, to walk away from the faith to reject the truth. And the scriptures have that all over in the New Testament about those who reject the truth. Now, I'm not talking about people who are struggling with sin and they're backsliding somewhat or at what point somebody doesn't choose to recant the faith but are living a sinful life. What happens to them? Only God knows what happens to them and only he knows the heart and he'll deal with that accordingly. Talking about individuals who use their free moral agent and choice to say, I no longer believe there's a God and I don't believe in Jesus and I don't believe there is the blood of the Lamb waiting for me through salvation. There's no way they can receive salvation. Now, whether or not they were saved at the beginning and they weren't before or in the middle, who can judge a person's heart that way? I know individuals I know that have had incredible walks in their life and at some point began to slip into sin and I think they were still saved when they were sinning, but they eventually slipped into so much darkness that they came out 
recanting the faith, recanting Jesus, trampling the blood of Jesus under their feet. With great responsibility comes great accountability to have this very powerful but yet deadly gift because it's by the use of that free moral agent is how we're going to be judged or how we're going to be acquitted. Just really important topic as we look at it because you can't run the race if you feel like somebody's running it for you. You can't work out your salvation if you think there's no work to complete. There is work. There, we need to put to death our choices and willfully choose the kingdom of God, even after salvation, to be able to continue to bear fruit and to become more in the likeness of Jesus. To learn more about the way, visit thetruthandthelife.com.